Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Let's see if we can finish up everything we've been doing with the Deep Resonance power generation and get the new power infrastructure up and going. But before that, I just want to mention that I made some changes to the way we load chunks. So up until this point, I've been keeping chunks loaded, which if you remember, loaded chunks is when you basically make sure parts of the world are loaded even when you're not near them. Normally, they would be unloaded when you get away from them. But for certain things like you always want your power generation to probably be going. You probably always want your farms to be going, even if you're not near them. And of course, the underwater Batania stuff. How I've been chunk loading all of that is with FTB Utilities, which is a mod that gives me all these options up here. You see there's this claim chunks thing, which is the option to either claim chunks or also chunk load the claim chunks. So a claim chunk just means like you own it, explosions are disabled. Um, it might mean that other teams can't build in the area, I'm not really sure, that's completely irrelevant for my case. But I've been using the chunk loading capabilities of this and it hasn't been working well. We have the whole thing that's happened with Batania where that's super unreliable and the water kept collapsing down and stuff and mana was being strange and just all sorts of weird issues. And then when I started to get the issue with the crystallizer over at the Deep Resonance power generation station, um, that thing would stop, it would just stop crystallizing. Whenever I kind of like went away from it and came back to it, it just would not crystallize anymore until I broke it and replaced it, which would waste whatever it already had inside of it because it doesn't keep it when you break it. So I thought, okay, we need to try something different for chunk loading. So I unchunk loaded basically everything from FTB utilities, except one chunk, which I think is on the moon. I think I chunk loaded a chunk there. So I unloaded all of that and I installed a mod called Chicken Chunks. No idea why it's called that, <laughs> but um, it gives you these chunk loaders. And uh, they're not as specific or as easy to use as just like clicking over a map like this, but hopefully they won't have as many issues. So we'll see. I also just kind of lowered the amount of stuff I have chunk loaded. So before I was chunk loading basically my entire base and the farm and all of that, but um, at this point, I'm only chunk loading just Batania and Deep Resonance. And we'll see how that is. We'll see if there's any problems. But yeah, just to show you what it looks like. And also to take a quick look and make sure nothing has completely been destroyed here, because when I went over here to place the chicken chunk loader, much to my not surprise, all my plants were gone again. So at some point, the water came crashing down. And a lot of the mana pools were like nearly empty, which doesn't make any sense. Because every, every mana pool should be completely full. Oh yeah, and also, things will look a little bit different here. All my redstone has been washed away. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to replace. I think I also need to replace some comparators. I think redstone comparators also get washed away. But yeah, I was like, okay, screw this. This is terrible. <laughs> and put down this chicken chunks loader. So you basically give it a radius, you tell it what kind of a shape you want. For this place, I put a circle since the base is basically kind of circular. But for deep resonance, I did a square. And you could do this show lasers thing, which it's honestly a pretty terrible display. It's really hard to see where the border is because when you get kind of far away from it, it just disappears like that. It just like scans around the outside. But yeah, it doesn't really work well. You gotta go to all sorts of weird angles to try to figure out exactly how much like there you can kind of see it. it's like okay yeah that covers the whole base so a little bit funky but if it actually works unlike FTB utilities then <laughs> I'll take it I am tired of stuff being weird so let's go over to deep resonance and see if we can get our power monitoring to work correctly because if you remember right the basically basically the last step before the thing just kind of works for the most part is that's strange looking. The lights. <laughs> um, the last thing we need to do is get the monitoring of the high and low power signals to work correctly, and it doesn't seem to be working correctly with this multi-block structure that is all these capacitor banks. These six capacitor banks? One, two, three, four, no, eight capacitor banks. So XNet's not reading it correctly. So I'm gonna try these RF monitors from RF tools. It monitors the amount of RF in an adjacent machine can also send out a redstone signal if the power goes above or below some value. So, I want to try that. I've never used it before. Huh. 
see that's not really gonna this is probably not gonna work because it's showing you all these different cabasters as separate entities but they're actually one mm. alarm level I mean we could try this let's try this so let's say send a redstone signal I gotta move this put it like there let's say send a redstone signal when it's more than 99% so does that turn red when it's outputting a signal or does it just turn red just when it's like selected on a thing I'm assuming that is the side it takes the Ritz, uh, sends the redstone out from? More than 99%. Well, regardless of whether it's reading a single block or all of them, that should be on. Maybe I need to turn this. Oh, this is another little mod I installed, by the way. I think it's also from the same person who made RF tools. It's just like a little utility where... Hey, background train. It's a little utility that allows you to do some stuff, but the only one I really care about is just allows me to rotate a block without having a tool. Ah, there's where the redstone comes out. Okay. Nope. There we go. So more than 99%, 100% should be off. It is good. That doesn't necessarily mean it's working, though. Let's drain some power from this thing. Got an energy trash can. Is it going to just send it out? It is very, very, very fast. Um. Hmm. Actually, even if it is reading from a single one, I feel like this might work fine. But then that means the XNet problem is not just that it's reading from a single one, it's something else. I don't know. We'll see. So. Let's get it down to, like half. Okay, let's try this. So this one is set to more than 99%, so basically full. And this one should output when it's less than 50%. That's the low charge. So, let's put that there. When it gets to 100 million, this should turn on. I didn't select it, did I? There we go. <laughs> okay, so that seems to work. Let's turn that back on. By placing the redstone there. This should fill up really fast. So as soon as it gets to 100 million, this should turn off. And this one should stay as it is until it gets filled up, filled up all the way. And... And it went off. Okay, so I think this is going to work. So let me just route it up so that instead of reading from here, we're reading from over there. Okay, I think I've got it hooked up. So let's place the redstone down here. Let's make this thing go below 50%. It should turn on automatically. Right about now. That turns on. Boop. And. Okay, so that works. Now I'm just going to sit here and watch it go until it reaches full. And let's see if it turns off. Okay, almost there. Of 99%, I might not quite get to 100%. Outputs and look at that, and it did actually get to 100%. That is so cool. And look, all that power we've done pumping um, 200 million into this thing multiple times and dumping a bunch of it, wasting a bunch of it. And these crystals are at like about 90%, 80%, 92%, 82%. Like these things hold so much energy. Yeah, I think the reason... No, I'm actually pretty sure the reason these RF monitors are working correctly, whereas XNet is not. I believe both XNet and RF monitor... I, b I believe both of them are reading just a single block of a multi-block structure. But the difference is, this thing outputs a redstone signal based on a percentage of power. Whereas XNet, it bases its sensing on an absolute amount of power. Not a percentage, but a total amount of RF that's in the block. So, I'm telling it, 
you know, I'm telling XNet the amount of power I want it to have in the whole thing, but I think it's only measuring the amount of RF in this one block here that it's connected to. But if you, me if you measure percentage, then it doesn't matter, because I guess I'm assuming Ender I.O. probably balances each block to be perfectly even in the amount of RF, since everything's shared, so it should be accurate, and it should give you the same percentage through all of the blocks. It's kind of weird. XNet and RF tools are both made by the same person, but the RF monitors work well, and the power reader thing doesn't really work with multi-block structures. I mean, I could, like, I could probably make it work. I could take the total amount of power in this whole thing and divide it by eight, and then, you know, work based off of that. But then if I change the amount of power that's held in this thing, if I add more capacitors to it, then it wouldn't work anymore, and that's just funky and annoying and weird. You know, these will always work, no matter how big it is, so... I could make this arbitrarily big and it would work fine. Okay. So that's power up and going. Um, I do want to add a drawer here for the deep resonance ore, which by the way, I don't have any more of. I'm completely out of it. So actually, let me see how much I can get with the digital miner. Okay, I managed to get a bit more than a stack of resonating ore thanks to the digital miner. I just took it to the mining dimension and every place where I, I put it, I was able to get somewhere between 30 and 40 resonating ore. So that should be enough for now. I'm going to do more uh, more large scale mining expeditions in the future. But for now, that should tide me over. That's enough for, I don't know, uh, two more crystals, I think. So put down a drawer for the crystals. Let's extract. And we want to insert into what? What's this called? Smelter. Insert into the smelter. Well, where are you? There you are. Insert. Let's make sure we only do that. Oh, and it's already on. I guess I turned off the wrong channel. I turned off this one for some reason. And that should be working? No. What's wrong? It could possibly be that this smelter's messed up, just like the crystallizer was. In fact, the crystallizer may still be messed up, because I haven't destroyed and replaced them since I switched over the chunk loader. Because I think that's right, right? All the item channels are on. Yes. We are... Oh. Did I put it on the wrong one? Oh, I did. Whoops. It is actually supposed to be on this one. My bad. So, insert. Turn on. Now we should be good. There we go. Excellent. So that's going to go in here when it's done, and it is getting bigger. Now that it's this size, yep. Now that it's above six buckets worth, it's starting to shoot at the lasers. Okay, everything's working. So while that's doing its thing, um, I'm going to put facades on everything to make everything look better. But before that, that's like the very final step. Before that, I just want to consider the whole thing I've just created and think, are there any big, like, obvious holes that I need to improve? Because remember, I want this to be just self-automating, like everything just works as long as it's got the items. And if anything goes wrong, I want it to just stop. Either shut down the program or just don't continue past that stage. So let's think of the safety protocols I have in, in place and things that could go wrong. Okay, if the lava level is wrong, the program shuts down. So, solved. Um, if these things run out of filter material, the purity will never go above... At some point, it'll never go above the 80% it needs to, to get shot with the lasers. So it'll just stay here waiting for the purity to go above a certain amount. So nothing will really go wrong other than it just kind of stops. I would prefer it to tell me about that, but eh, it's not that big of a deal. I'd be more inclined to add more error messages and stuff to the program if it wasn't for the fact that... I don't have the programmer down here anymore, but if it wasn't for the fact that the program is already taking up most of the space available. So I kind of would need to make like another program or really jam stuff in to add too much more. So I think I'll leave that. That's fine. Um, that's all good. So then it gets transferred to this tank here. Once, once this is all perfect, it gets transferred to this tank here for six seconds. But only up to six buckets worth, right? 
Yeah. Not that that matters in particular. It could be filled up all the way. That's fine. Um, I already solved the issue where if we're in the process of transferring liquid to here, we don't send liquid to here, making sure that we don't mix in impure stuff that gets then transferred down the line to here. So that shouldn't be a problem, although I haven't tested it, but it shouldn't be. Um, we already have built into the system, kind of just by default, the overproduction of crystals kind of being controlled. So remember I wanted to have like a backup number of crystals? But we learned that each one of these can hold an extra crystal here. So it's got the crystal on top plus a spot for another crystal. Uh, I don't believe the crystals stack. No, I'm almost certain they don't stack. Each one's unique. So each one's going to have an extra crystal. And when there's no more room to extract into them, then it's simply going to stay inside of here, and this crystallizer won't be able to make another crystal. Which is fine. So let's kind of think of what happens down the line when this thing gets stuffed up. So this crystal can't extract. This crystallizer can't crystallize this liquid here. So this, at some point, is going to fill up to max. If this fills up to max, it's going to try to extract it and send it to the crystallizer. But it won't be able to. But it'll keep trying. That's fine. And that's about it. Yeah, that's no problem at all. Yeah, we shouldn't have any issues. Seems perfect. So what's happening right now? The purity keeps going down, so it can't shoot it with a gunpowder, and that's because we are sending more fluid to it? Yeah, looks like we just stopped sending fluid to it, so now purity's catching up, starting to shoot with a laser. Yeah, so that's working fine. I think it's all good. Yeah, okay. So take a look at what this absolute mess looks like right now before putting the facades on all the XNet connectors. Uh, I think we do need to chunk load our base, or at least a little part of it, because this thing is starting to run out of power. And the power is coming from the quantum entangle porter, which is supplied back at the base, which I believe has become unloaded since we're away from it, which is why everything is running out of power. <laughs> Let me go fix that real quick. So I don't want to chunk load my entire base if I can help it. Because there's just no point in that, it's just a lag fest. So I've got these kind of chunk battery boundaries on. It's a little bit hard to see. But let's try to not load more chunks than we need. So there's two type of chunk loaders from Chicken Chunks. There's the chunk loader, and then there's the spot loader. I think the spot loader just loads the chunk that you put the thing in. So it just loads one chunk. So like for the quantum entangle porter to work, which is right here, we just need this chunk loaded. The yellow, I think, is the center of the chunk. And I guess the red would be the boundaries. Each chunk is 16 by 16, by the way. So yeah, that should be fine. I'll just put a spot loader here. So that'll load the quantum entangle porter. That's great. But we're also going to want our power generation going. Down here. I don't know if I need to load all the like wires and connections in between, or if I just need like the source and the destination. I'm hoping just the source and the destination. So let's see what we got here. Got a boundary there. So I guess I'll just put down like a big one, and I'll set it to a square and do a radius of two. That should be fine. Yeah, looks like that includes everything. Okay. I don't even know what button I pressed to get these to show up. If you ever want to see like light levels or chunk boundaries, just kind of like hit all the F keys and something will happen. Oh, oh, that's a much better one. Okay, so if I hit F9, it shows me this one, which kind of sucks. Hit it again and it changes to this one. That's much more clear. Yeah, so that's a chunk. There, how's that? A little bit better looking. That looks so much better with all those weird connections covered up. So I noticed that everything stopped working, and I was worried for a second that something had gone horribly wrong. But no, it's actually... Um, it's just because this infusing laser... It's not infusing this with enderpearls as I want it to, even though it's receiving the signal... To send enderpearls. 
And the reason for that is because it's out of the... I forgot what this stuff is called. The crystal stuff, where you give it old crystals and then it turns it into this stuff. And uses that with, with each time it uh, infuses it. So we're out of that. Shouldn't be a problem. Because, you know, as soon as we use up these crystals, we can throw the old ones in here. Or, I mean, in here. And I don't think... Like, we shouldn't run into any problems with, over time, losing this crystal stuff. Like, one crystal should provide you with more than enough of this stuff to be able to make more than one crystal to replace itself. So once we built up a buffer, we should be fine. Um, yeah, so I put a bunch of crystals in this to start with. Those were just the crappy ones I'd found all around the place. The better the crystal you put in this thing, the more fluid it gives you. So these crystals, compared to what I put in before, these are amazing crystals. So once these are used up and I put them in here, it should give me a lot more than the other ones did. Probably many thousands of this stuff. I'm just thinking, I just realized... These pedestals... Does it say here? Place crystals and pick up spent crystals. Yeah, it doesn't say here. I think it says in the book, though, that... When the crystal's empty, they'll break it and try to place a new crystal. And I think they say that they put the spent crystal, if possible, in nearby inventory. So like a chest that's touching it or something. Kind of just like these purifiers. Put spent filters back here. I don't have a chest, so... If it kicks out the old crystals, they're actually just going to go to waste right now. I should probably fix that. That would be horrible. I should automate that, shouldn't I? For now, I'm just going to put a chest next to each one. There we go. That's fine for now. Okay. That's all good. Got a resonating ore here. It's empty, of course, because I just put it all in here. I think that's about it. <laughs> For power generation, now it's time to deal with power transmission. I think I want to have a long underwater glass tube connecting this platform here to the mainland. I think that'd look really cool. A tube that you can actually walk inside of and be under the water and see around you. Yeah, I'm gonna try this ornate steel chiseled glass. Because, well, it's glass so you can actually see through it, but it also looks kind of strong. I don't want it to look like a weak tunnel. I mean, it should be this strong, kind of structurally sound tunnel. So hopefully this looks the part. Um, I'm thinking that... Oh, whoa. Oh, my jetpack's out of power. That's why it felt funny. I was like, why am I going down even though I'm holding the jetpack? Well, that's a problem. Um, but anyway, I think I'm just going to have it so you kind of go off the side of the platform here a little bit. And then you kind of like go downstairs. Down into the tube. And then the rest of the tube just continues straight to the mainland. Let me work that out and go recharge my pack. Okay, so I'm thinking this is going to be the start. Yeah, it's going to be a 5x5. Five five. I want it to be pretty roomy. I don't want it to be super cramped. And it's going to need room for both the player to go into it and also power cables. Yeah, just a quick kind of preview of what this... This uh, ornate steel glass looks like. I think it looks pretty good. It does look kind of strong with those sort of like steel borders, but you can still see through it pretty well. You know, we'll see what it looks like actually underwater once I get rid of the water on the inside. I'm not sure what I'm going to use for that. Maybe sponges? I think sponges are a thing. Um, but one thing that has become immediately clear is I need some underwater stuff. I move extremely slow underwater and I can't breathe underwater. Those are problems for working underwater. So I think I need to go make something from Batania. I do have... Whoa, my God. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Is that what happens when you open the baubles button? Okay, cool. Um, hmm. Only when we're flying? Yep, just when we're flying. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. 
Uh, yeah, we got the Band of Mana on. We have, also have the Sojourner's Sash. Oh, I don't think I showed you that. So that's a uh, Batania a bauble item. Um, I believe it has two effects. One is just that it makes you run faster. So I move a bit faster. And another thing is it gives you auto step up. So without even pressing space or jumping, if I just like run into things like this, it just auto steps me up. Kind of handy. Sometimes it's actually a little bit annoying. Sometimes you don't want to step up, but most of the time it's nice. It also sometimes doesn't work. It seems to only work reliably with a single block height of difference, like between here and here, it works. But sometimes it doesn't work between like this path and here, because the path actually makes this a little bit lower than it otherwise would be, so... Thank you for the sirens. I guess they really wanted to be in the recording. So the path makes it a little bit lower than a full block height, so the total block like height difference between here and here is a little bit more than a block, and so this doesn't always work. Sometimes it seems to, and I don't know why, but most of the time it doesn't. It's just unreliable. Anyway, um, there are many, many more Botania items that do all sorts of stuff, including ones that allow you to breathe underwater and move faster. I don't remember what it's called, though. Let me look it up. Here we go. So it's the Ring of Chordata, or Chordata. Puffer fish, rune of water, raw salmon, and some mana steel ingots. Pretty cheap. Let me, well, let me just show you. So here's the speed underwater. I've got night vision on. Here's the speed underwater without the ring. You can see it's excruciatingly slow. You go down and up pretty slowly. Well, I go up fast because of the jetpack. I go down slowly and I go forwards and backwards extremely slow. And of course, I can only breathe for like 10 seconds. With it on, it's a different story. With it on, you move a lot faster. Way faster. You can, you can breathe indefinitely, so long as you have mana. Um, you'll notice that these bubbles down here still do go down, so it looks like I'm going to run out of oxygen, but um, I believe what happens is once they reach zero, it, I think, uses up mana and refreshes your bubbles. So you'll see in just a sec, it'll go back up to max. There we go. Get out of here, Guardian. It said it also... Ah. It says it also gives you clear vision underwater. It looks like... Oh yeah, it looks like it gives you, like, the night vision effect. Yeah, it just gives you the night vision effect. So this is with my normal night vision off. This is with, a, with it on. Look at the night vision in the top left. It tells you how long you have left. So here's my normal night vision that I enable from my helmet. 10 seconds, and it just like keeps refreshing the 10 seconds, so it always stays at that point. I turn it off. Here's the night vision from the Chordata ring. What the hell does that even mean? Aside from being an obscenely huge number, why is there a colon 36, colon 29 at the end? Is that, is the beginning hours and the colon... Well, I guess that'd be seconds, right? So is that minutes and then colon seconds? Dear God. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, cool. So I don't have to enable night vision when I go underwater. That's nice. Just wish everything didn't look piss yellow. Anyway, back to construction. Okay, I've got it built out a little bit more. And before I continue, I want to get rid of the water inside of it just to see how it looks to look out from the inside without water. So I want to try a couple things. I've never really tried to get rid of water in mass before. Permanently, anyway. Obviously, I've used the bubbles for the Batania base, but that's only temporary. So there's sponges, which soak up water. And they're actually from Devault Minecraft. I've pretty, basically never used them, so I don't really know how good they are. Uh, but there's also something called the Ring of Liquid Banning from Actually Additions, which is a very strange name, and I'm a little bit scared to use it. I've never used it before. But let's try them both. Let's try the ring first. Does it... Do you just have to hold it? Whoa. Oh, well. Um, I guess you just hold it and go near? You do have to be holding it, right? So not holding it, holding it. Whoa. That is cool. Is it doing it like... 
a three by three around me or something? What if I just do it underwater, like here? Whoa, <laughs> that is strange. And the water just comes back. Huh, interesting. Oh, crap, I just realized I almost went through a million RF. Wow, that drains it fast. So will that work just to like walk through here? Well, there goes all the power. Oh, that went, oh my God. That went through more than a million RF. I also had this two million RF battery on me. Holy crap. Let's try a sponge. Okay, uh, yeah, that's not too good. You need a lot of sponges. Yeah, not too good at all. Well, let's try to get rid of the water just right here. A little bit more right here. And then the rest, of course, is just going to be pulling in from outside. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. So here's what it's going to look like. It's going to be really cool. Oh, I've got night vision on. I think it's going to be even cooler, too, if I put some lights out here and leave night vision off while we're down here. So everything's going to look dark except for all this coral and stuff and maybe some lights. I wonder if there's an easy way to spread coral, because if there's coral all around this tube, that'd be super cool. But I think it's only like right here, and then the rest of it I think is just kind of bare sand. Yeah, super cool. Alright, yeah, I think that's going to work, so I'm going to keep building that out until we reach the mainland. Well, I got most of the tube done. Ran into glass for the very last bit there. So while I'm waiting for the glass to build up, let's just like run through this tunnel with the ring of liquid banding and see what happens. It takes up a lot of power, but maybe if I just like sprint through it, maybe you can do a lot more with the power that I have than, than I thought. So is it using it up constantly? Down, down, down. Yeah, it just keeps using it up. So let's just sprint through and see what happens. Oh, it's not quite doing it at the ceiling. So I think maybe I need to be like this. Wait. Oh, it stopped working. Oh my god, I just went through 3 million RF already. Ooh. The nice thing, by the way, about this new battery bank I have is that it is way faster at charging my stuff than anything else by far. And you can also throw more than one thing in, so it's got these four charging slots. Look at how fast this charges. really fast. I'm assuming it's max output up here of 200,000 RF per tick is the same max as here, so I'm pretty sure the transfer rate of both of these is probably limited by the item itself. Okay, let's try that again. Faster, faster! Almost out of power. A little bit left, and... And it's out. Yeah, look at that, that worked fantastic. Because the water source blocks are all at the top. If you get rid of the water source blocks, then you're good. Oh. Well, that's awkward. Definitely gonna wanna put lights around this tube so we don't have that issue. It's dry down there? Oh yeah, I guess I completely covered it from the water. Hmm. I'm tired of having a tiny double battery, so let's make a bigger one. I just got all this stuff together for an elite energy cube. I had most of the stuff, but I didn't have enough of it, so I just kind of had to make more of pretty much everything. 
And with that elite energy cube, I believe we can surround it with empowered Inori crystals. Wait. Triple... Triple battery? Hold on. What am I missing? I'm trying to go for the quintuple battery. There it is. Quintuple battery. Yeah. Empowered Inori crystal. All around an elite energy cube gives you a quintuple battery. This is saying I'm going to get a triple battery. Elite energy cube empowered Inori crystal. What is going on? This is the same thing that it was going to give me. Like, here, I'm just going to cheat an item in just to test. This is the same thing I was going to get when I put in the basic energy cube, not the elite. Let's go test this real quick. It might be a recipe issue. So if we do the basic energy cube surrounded by empowered Inori crystal, we get a triple battery. Take the basic out, put the elite in, still gives you a triple battery. How did that happen? That makes no sense. Different item, same result, which differs from what JEI tells me you're going to get. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm just going to say, hey, I crafted it. I crafted a quintuple battery. That was the exact recipe. Um, I used up, well, basic energy cube I cheated in. I used up the elite energy cube and all these empowered Inori crystals. Delete. Okay. We did it. Yay. I hope this battery, now that it's bigger, I hope it charges faster than the smaller one. Not that it'd be a big issue, but it's just really satisfying. Let's go see. Eh. I don't think it's faster. Actually, never mind. I take that back. I just compared it side by side with the double battery. It's definitely a lot faster at charging. Okay. Now we've got 1 million in here, 16 million in here, and 2 million in here. That should be enough. Here we go. Almost there. I think it stopped working. Did we run through all the power? Oh, I didn't actually turn this other battery on. That's why it stopped. Sneak right click. There we go. Okay. What happens if you have two batteries in your inventory and they're both set to charge? Do they charge each other? I think they do, because this battery has a little bit of charge in it. Even though I emptied it into the Ring of Liquid Banning. Now that I've turned on this one, <laughs> I think they flow into each other. That should do it. Alright, connected to the mainland. Oh no. Oh my god. How did that happen? Eh. There we go. <laughs> Let's fly through our new tunnel. Make sure it's all clear. Looks awesome. Yeah, I don't like this part. Like, I kind of want to just fill it in with water. Then stuff wouldn't spawn. And it also wouldn't look like this ugly yellow. Although I'm going to turn off night vision, aren't I? Still, though, I think I will fill it in. Some cleanup to do. I'd like to get rid of these things right against the glass because they make the water look all weird. Yeah, clean that up. Put some lights outside. Need to put a ladder here. Okay, let's get to work. Got a ladder in here now. Now that I've got so much iron, I made these rusty ladders from Lissy's doors. Each individual... Whoops. Oh, I did not get to destroy them instantly. Each individual rusty ladder piece takes three pieces of iron. So unless you have a lot of iron, it's not worth it, but I do. Looks pretty cool. Use some factory blocks from chisel for this little structure. Doesn't exactly look amazing from like down here. It looks kind of weird, but it is very functional. Because if I just put a ladder like going straight down here, what always happens is you just, you don't see the ladder from here. You run over the edge and then you kind of like overshoot and tend to kind of fall off the ladder. I think this sort of design is a lot more functional where it like funnels you down a hole and it's not on the side that you step off of, but it's on the side opposite. So, like, you can kind of just run over it if you want. But if you just stop for a sec, then you just go right down. 
It's nice. Functional. Not the prettiest, but I like it. All right, let's fix the feet for this, huh? There we go. It's got proper feet now. Should I have something in the center? It'd be a bit hard to figure out exactly where the center is, is the only problem. Nah, I'll leave it. Yeah, now that it's got all the facades on and it's got feet, actual structure coming out of it, it kind of looks like a proper thing, doesn't it? And I'm not sure what I'm going to do when I get up to the point where I have enough spent filters to like, actually like encase the whole thing in radiation protection. I'm not even sure if I should now that I think about it, because it's so far away from my base, does it really matter? On the other hand, it could look really cool depending on what I do. I just don't know what I would do. Maybe like a half dome or something, you know? Hmm. Not sure. Anyway. So this part is done. Let's fix this plant issue and this whole issue here where there's no water down here and there's enemies, including a bat. A poor little bat stuck under there. Oh no. Bats can't swim. Okay, that took a while. That took a long while. So my first discovery is that, um, well, I wanted a bunch of lights either on the inside or the outside of the glass, but it turns out you can't put lights on glass. They don't attach. Click and nothing happens. I'm assuming it'd be the same for torches and pretty much anything else. So then I tried putting a bunch of these outside in the water. Because if you remember, I actually used these at the Batania base. So I was putting them on the outside, and the thing is though, they don't light up very much, and they also kind of look weird, because they have that little, like, they get rid of all the water around it, and they don't take up the whole block space, so it just looks strange. It didn't really work. It sorta, kinda, a little bit worked, up until the point where the ocean gets really deep, and then there's just nowhere to put the lights, because I can't put them on the glass. So what I need to make like support beams going up to the glass along the whole thing and it just wasn't working very well. So I went back to the good old illumination wand. I'd like to use something else, but really it's kind of just the best thing I got. It's either that or the illumination wand from Astral Sorcery, which I like even less. So wouldn't with these, they go inside of here just fine because I don't really attach to anything. Lit up the inside really well. And I opted to only put these inverted white fixtures outside, only where it gets deep. So I've got them right in the center, down here. When it starts to get deep, just so you can kind of like see how deep it is. Sort of like a depth gauge, kind of cool. I think it looks pretty good. I do wish there was more light down there, but light just really does not spread underwater for some reason. You can see it goes like three or four blocks when it should go about 16 I think. Okay so that's all that. I also cleaned up all the weird looking bits with the plants outside and all that. I think it's looking pretty good. Well I think I'm gonna end this episode there. I'd like to continue on but building takes a long time and, and I'm absolutely starving so I kinda need to go eat. But yeah, I'm really proud of what I've done so far. It looks really cool. Gigantic glass tube under the water. So next episode, I think what I'm going to do... Get out of here, please. Another one. I can swim like a fish now. Haha, <laughs> I can catch them. Love that ring. So I think what I'm going to do in the next episode is... I'm going to go forwards a little bit more here like extend the inside of this glass a little bit more into the mountainside, and then I'm going to go straight down. Because if I just keep going forwards at this Y level, where this tube is right now, then I'm going to probably intersect a bunch of things. I want it to be down probably around Y50. So that's more around service tunnel level. Speaking of, what exactly what exactly is the level of my service tunnels? I still, you know, like five million years ago, it feels like I said I would make more entrances to the service tunnels, and I never have. I will. I will, I promise. Okay, so they're at about Y60. Hmm. Well, I'll probably go down to Y50 anyway, just to be... just to be safe. So, I'll dig down, then dig over, connect it to the rest of my service tunnel so I can actually kind of wire some stuff around. And then at that point, 
I need to decide exactly how I want to distribute the power because the HV connectors from Immersive Engineering are not going to cut it. They just don't transfer enough power. I mean, at the moment, we can output 200,000 RF per tick from the battery bank, and that could be increased. Yeah, definitely not going to cut it. I've got some ideas. I want to do a little bit of R&D just to check. There's this one other thing. There's actually an energy transfer system in actually additions. This whole like laser transfer system, I've never used it. I'm not sure how much power can be transferred through the advanced type of connectors. I know the basic ones only transfer a thousand RF per tick, which is not anywhere near enough, but maybe the advanced ones are better. You know, maybe they look cool. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to do some R&D next episode, figure out some numbers, see what could work, what doesn't, what looks cool, what doesn't, what fits the aesthetic of the base and all that. So thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.